This conference will now be recorded. God bless you. We greet you this day in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. We want to extend to one, one and all happy Thanksgiving. Pray that you have had a, a joyous holiday with the Lord and with your family. Uh, as we often say that every day is a day of Thanksgiving for a believer. So we, woke, we thank God for waking us up this morning, allow us to see another day. And we're grateful to God that we're able to come and study. I know that we probably all have had two good days of eating. Ain't, ain't that right? Amen. So today ought to be a day of fasting. Amen. Uh, we thank God for food, nevertheless. So mo most of us, us have more food than we can eat. And uh, we can do our part to share with others. So today we have a great lesson ahead of us. I'm elated to be able to be the teacher for today. Uh, we recognize God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, to our superintendent, Sister Catherine Hill, to our Christian Education Director, Sister Foreman, Brenda Foreman, and to all the facilitators, to all those that's on the line this morning. This is a dynamic lesson. This is an inclusive lesson. You ought to shout because of this lesson today, because salvation have come to all nations, amen, on this lesson. And we thank God for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So let us look to the Lord and pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Oh God, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you, oh God, for your saving grace. Oh, by grace are you saved through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh God, as we come, we look to be the author and the finish of our faith. We look to you, O oh God, as the one who teaches us. Uh, you said in, in Matthew 14, 26, and your, the Holy Ghost, and you will send the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, and he shall bring back to your remembrance all things whatsoever I have taught you. So we thank you for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that guides us, that keeps us, sustains us. O oh God, we thank you, O oh God, that comforts us, and even in times like these. Oh God, speak to our hearts and speak to our minds. Open up our understanding, oh God. We may have prepared, we may have studied, but now open the crystal fountain, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will speak to us and speak through us, speak to us, that it would give insight, oh God, that your people will not just become hearers of the word, but become doers of the word. In Jesus' name, we ask these blessings. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. We also recognize our ministerial staff, Graham Hayes, Evangelist Cooper, and all our officers, Chairman Bryant. God bless you this morning. Uh, this lesson today uh, is a lesson that we need to uh, uh, really show appreciation for because this lesson today uh, brings to fulfillment or a prophetic word spoken that God has his eye on all people. Amen. God, the creator of all mankind. Uh, God, the one who breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. Man become a living soul. So God, uh, he let down that all souls. And I, we're going to let you that in Ezekiel. All souls belong to God. Amen. So 
whether they are Jew, whether they're some, or whether they're a Gentile or, or non-Jewish. Let's just just a Gentile, non-Jewish. But all souls, if you have the breath of life, you belong to God. And now how we act and respond to God is a different thing because some people refuse to believe, some people refuse to accept that there is a God eternal. And so uh, once we accept him, we believe his work and we believe his words. And so this lesson proves to us that there is a salvation plan. God has a salvation plan for all people. And so I think the best thing for us to do we're going to read the lesson. Let's read the lesson first. And I want us to paint a picture. I, we're going to read this lesson, but uh, there's, a, there's some things that's happening in the background. In order to understand this lesson, you have to really look at the background of uh, prophetic messages that were given. You have to look at the background of the charge that Christ gave to his disciples. And once we can put this those when we're going to ask that you have your Bibles with you this morning, amen. Because we're going to roam, go through some scriptures to make this give some clarity to this lesson. Uh, the disciples had some charge that they that they received from the Lord Jesus Christ, and this is now uh, as they carry out the charge, the charge is actually being fulfilled, amen. And uh, before you go into battle, even warfare. Uh, there are to be some preparations, amen. We don't, as soldiers, we don't send uh, the, the soldiers into the battlefield first before you prepare them, amen. So the disciples had three, three and a half years of training, instruction, wa walking with Christ, uh, 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 witnessing with the, the work of the Lord. And so now, as he ascended, Christ would ascend up to heaven, uh, it's time to fulfill the work. It's time to do the work. So now this is a lesson. Uh, we're going to look at the background. We're going to look at this lesson to make it understanding. And then last but not least, I'm going to show you something. Even with all your good works, you still have to contend. <laughs> you still have to put up. You're still going to be challenged. So we're going to look at our lesson, Acts chapter 10. Uh, this is the NIV version, New International Version. And so... Uh, We'll ask for some readers. Uh, we got a couple of verses here. We have about from 34 to 47. We have about 13 verses. So if I can get someone to read, uh, volunteer from uh, verse 34 down to uh, verse uh, 40. And then the next reader can read from 41 to 47. So the first reader can read from verse 34 including verse 40, and then the next reader can read from 41 to 47. Okay, Pastor, I'll read from 34 to 40. God bless you. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but except from every nation, the one who fear him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel. Announce the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what had happened through the providence of Judea, beginning in Galilee. After the baptism that John preached, how God anointed, anointed Jesus in Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and the power and how he went around doing good and healing all who was who were under the power of the evil because God was with him. We are witness of everything he did in the country of the Jews in the root in, in, in the region. They killed him by hanging him on the cross. But God raised rise him from the dead on the third and the, on the third day and cause him to be seen. God bless you. Thank you, Mother. The next reader, please. I read that too, Pastor. All right. He was, not, he was not seen by all the people, but by the witness whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. 
He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one who God appointed and judged a living in the dead. All the prophecies testified about him that everyone who believed in him received forgiveness of sin through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcision believed who had come with Peter were the starting that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been told out on Gentiles. But they heard but they but they heard him speaking in tongue and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no mm. one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. God bless you. Thank you, Mother, for reading our lesson this morning. God bless you. Uh for those of us who have our Bibles, let's let's do this. We've heard the lesson. It says, "Good news for all." What is what what is the gospel? I want some interaction this morning. Anybody that been in the Bible class? What is the gospel? What is the gospel? Who's the Jesus Christ? It's the good news. Amen. Thank you, Sister Johnny. That's what the gospel is, Church. The birth, the life, the ministry, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When the gospel is preached, it's good news to us that salvation is free to all. Good news for all. Amen. Good news. The birth, the life, the ministry. This is what this lesson is talking about. The crucifixion, the resurrection. And Peter let it known that uh, everybody didn't really witness but we were witnesses. Uh, uh, we ate with him. We drank with him. We received instructions from him after he arose from the dead. Our walk with Christ, our salvation, our, our faith is based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. To some believers, uh, Christian, Christian, as we've been entitled now, uh, people of the way, uh, they still feel that we worship a dead savior. They, some folks still believe that Christ is buried in the grave, amen. And that our walk, our walk and our service is in vain, amen. But our faith is based on the resurrection of our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. Because he lives, we face our tomorrow. Because he lives or fears is gone. Now, in order for us to understand this lesson, I'd like for you to open up your Bibles. We're going to walk through the Bible for a few moments. I'm going to ask some questions. Uh, and as I said before, this lesson is only being fulfilled what Christ said would come to pass. And so if you have your Bibles, and I need a reader, Matthew 28. Uh, we're going to look at ch chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. And only thing that uh, the disciples are doing is they have given, been given a charge, and now they're carrying out the charge. This one you read in Acts 10. Uh, Matthew 28. We're going to look at verses 16 through 20. Can I get a reader? Good morning, Pastor. I bless you. Pastor. Matthew 28, 16. Then the 11 disciples went away from Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And when Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And verse again, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Pause, pause, pause. pause. Did he say uh, some nations? Oh. Did it say oh. only Jews? All oh. nations. I want you to look at that word, all. All right. 
all nations. Go ahead, keep continue. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. Pause, what? pause, pause. <laughs> Some things, all, all things. things. Half of the things. All things. Or only what you want them to know. All, all things. things. Thank you. Keep on. Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen, amen, and amen. Great submission. I, I like your voice this morning, Sister Pencil. I want you to turn with me to act, uh, no, to uh, St. Mark's chapter 16. Turn with St. Mark's chapter 16, verse 14 through 16. Mark's chapter 16. 14 through 16. Say that again, Pastor. Mark 14. 14. No, excuse me. Mark 16. Mark chapter 16 and verses 14. Thank you. Matthew, uh, Mark, Mark 16. Yes. Ver verses 14. 14. Yes. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at me and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and Where? preach Some all of the, the world. Some of the world. All the world. We cleared. Keep on. All the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. God bless you. Thank you. And I got one more scripture I want you to read. I want you to read Acts. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. Acts 1, verses 4 through 8. Acts verses four. Acts chapter one verses oh, four. One. Acts chapter one verses four. Through eight, yes. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said it he. Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou not at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnessed, witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. Thank you, Sister Pencil. That's what I want you to see how Christ uh, outlined the format for salvation for his elected disciples, amen? And he said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. That's the path you're gonna take. And in Samaria, those are the Samaritans, the part you Jews, amen? not only to the Samaritan and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That means all creation. So the trace that uh, this gospel must spread, uh, God has a plan and a plan of salvation for all people. Amen. Uh, I just want to give you some, um, God has a plan of salvation for all mankind. Uh, and I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, that God does not move ahead of time, but in the fullness of time, 
he moves at the right time, uh, which included uh, his move for plan of salvation included the Gentile nation, which were non-Jewish people. Uh, and this lesson also proved that we worship and we serve an inclusive, thank God, we worship an inclusive God and not an exclusive God. Amen. He's inclusive and not exclusive. Not now, I mean, he's able to take a sinner. Amen. You're not going to stay in your sinful ways and say, I'm going to be on the Lord's side. Now, when he comes, there has to be some transformation. That's what he, now he can take the worst of us, but when you have faith in God, that means you want to change. A transformation comes in your life. You're not going to want to stay in your sin. Nowhere do you read where people that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ remained in their sin. He could take the worst of sinners and convert them based on their faith and their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's in the changing business. He's in the inclusive business and not the exclusive. Amen. Business. He, he, uh, salvation is for all who wants to believe. Uh, and another thing I want us to say, this lesson reveals that there is no particular order when it comes to salvation after you believe all right when we look at this lesson uh you'll find that uh uh after they heard the word and they believed then they was filled with the holy ghost all right and then they were baptized all right with water all right most time we think that we got to believe be baptized and then wait on the holy god don't have no particular order when it comes to a salvation, some people say, first, I got to speak in tongues. No, that's just the edific edification of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The key thing is that you believe and then prayerfully you, you are baptized. Amen. And some water as an outward showing. And then you're being dwelled with the Holy and dwelled with the Holy Spirit. But sometimes people are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. This is what this lesson shows us. That's what happened. There's no particular order. And nothing I want you to know. Here's another question. Uh, I want to ask. Now we look in our lesson. It, it, uh, it's in our first verse is in verse thirty-four. It says, "Then Peter began to speak." Then Peter began to. So I asked the question this morning: uh, Who was Peter? Can anybody answer that question? Who was Peter? Who was Peter? They said, "Then Peter began to speak." I want to know: Do anybody know who Peter was? Feel free to hit star six. Who do you think Peter was? Since he's doing the talking. A disciple of Christ. A disciple. All right. He was a, a disciple of Christ. Now I have another question. Since we said we recognize him as a disciple, which Peter? All right. It's only one, but which which Peter is this doing the, this work here? Is this Peter the... Simon. Uh, which Peter? Was this the unconverted Peter doing this work here? Or was this the, you had, you know, the Peter, there was unconverted and converted. So which Peter here? Let me show you what unconverted Peter looked like. Uh, uh, unconverted, <laughs> un unconverted Peter, uh, can I get her? I need, I want you to, show, I'm going to show you something. Uh, uh, unconverted Peter was a lying Peter, a denying Peter. Sister Pencil? Can you turn with me to uh, St. Saint, Saint Matthew? Let's look in the book of St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. When I asked which Peter was this, uh, St. Matthew 26, we're gonna look at verses 33 to 35. Which Peter was, what character of Peter was this? St. Matthew 26, verses 33 to 35. Okay, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I not be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That is night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me twice. Peter said unto him, Though I shall die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise, uh, yes. Also said all the disciples. Yes. Yeah, so that was 
uh, we know Peter would just run in his mouth, right? Uh, look at uh, verse, stay in the same chapter, Sister, Sister Pencil. Look at verse 69. Uh, uh, was that, that, so that was lying and denying Peter. Look at verse 69 through 72. 69 through 72. I asked the question. Peter 16, was now Peter said without in the palace, and a damsel shall come unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he, wa when he was gone out, not into all them saying, I know not thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the port, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, this Follow, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou also art one of them, for they speak, be way with thee. Verse 74. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock grew. All right. So now was the, I asked the question: Which Peter was this? Was this the unconverted Peter talking, the lying, denying, cursing Peter? And and, and, and Sister uh, Pencil, look at verse fifty-one in the same chapter. Same chapter, twenty-six, verse fifty-one. What it says there. I think you, can we hear you? St. Matthew 26 and verse 51. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and stuck a servant of the high priest and smart off his ear. And that was cutting Peter. So yes. I question tonight, uh, this morning, when we look at this text today, was that unconverted Peter talking this lesson? He denied Jesus. He lied, lied. He told Jesus, I'm going to be with you to the end. He denied him. He cursed him. He was cussing. I don't even know the man. And Peter was known. That was Peter, the switchblade carrying Peter. Which Peter was this that was doing, speaking this good news or spreading the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ? Or was it, by chance, was it the converted Peter? Converted Peter. Come on, turn with me now to Acts chapter 2. Was it standing up, Peter? Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Acts chapter 2. We're going to be in Acts chapter 2. Was it the standing up, Peter, after Pentecost? What happens after you get the Holy Spirit? Huh? What happens? Sister Pencil, read Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. And what when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Can you and read 14 for me? Verse 14? Yes. Okay. And 14 says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Thank you, right there. Uh, was this preaching, Peter? Look at verses 37 through 41. Read 37 through 41 for me. So we have standing up, Peter. This is this is converted Peter now. After Pentecost, he stood up. What, all right, now look what, this is preaching, Peter. Verses 37 through 41. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, that shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and yet shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. 
and with many other words did he testify and exalt, saying, save yourselves from this up towards generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. I bless you. Thank you, uh, Sister Pencil. Now we have standing up Peter. We have preaching Peter. How about witnessing Peter? Turn with me to Acts chapter 3 and 6. 3 and what, Pastor? 3 and 6. Three and six. Acts. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Okay, we have standing up Peter. We got preaching Peter. We have uh, witnessing Peter. Now, how about bold Peter? Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Bold, Peter. 13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. All right, and here's the last one. Now that we have bold Peter, witnessing Peter, preaching, preaching Peter, standing up Peter, we have Peter that have been endowed with the Holy Spirit power, amen, to heal. We had healing Peter. Look what the Lord did by Peter. Acts chapter five. And we want to look at uh, verse 12 through uh, five. I'm going to move on from here. I just want to show you something. And by, by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, George, no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. In so much as they brought forth the sick, the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Yes. There thank, came thank you so much. Guys. We'll start right there. So we see okay. who's preaching this good news in chapter 10. This is the converted Peter, the transformed Peter, God's anointed servant. Apostle Peter, amen. And he uh, is being used by God. We read now, uh, uh, Sister Pencil read that they were supposed to go in Matthew, uh, to go teach all nations, all nations. They, it was no respect of person. Salvation started with the Jews. And when you read Acts chapter two, that came to the Jews first on the day of Pentecost. And then in Acts chapter 8, it, it spread it to the Samaritans, okay? In Acts chapter 8, if you look at uh, Acts 1, he said, I want you to go to Jerusalem, all Judea, and all Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's how the spread of the gospel went. So everything happened in the process or the fullness of time. God is not late. When, I, when we read our lesson today, this is approximately... 10 years after Pentecost. So you think God is late? No, he's always on time. And there is a, a person by the name of Cornelius, amen, who is a Roman centurion, all right? A Roman centurion who got tired of the paganistic uh, ways of, uh, of living. He lived in Caesarea Philippi, uh, he was satirian. He followed all the rituals of the Roman, but he realized that their God was not the true God. Uh, he uh, began to convert. He, you know, he heard about the God of Israel. Amen. The God who uh, uh, who brought the children out of Egypt. Amen. Judaism. He heard the law. He heard about Moses. Amen. He even heard about Christ, about what he did as while he was around. Amen. During his lifetime. Amen. He heard about the crucifixion. 
Amen. But he didn't know about resurrection. He didn't know about uh, that Jesus ascended and is coming back. He didn't know about the Holy Spirit. Amen. But God has a plan. And so God chose uh, for the for the Gentile nation, let it begin at the home of uh, 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 of Cornelius, amen, a, a Roman centurion, a Roman uh, officer of the soldiers, amen. And so now, what I want to try to make, there's two things I wanted, want you to see, if I don't say nothing else. If you're going to be a follower of Christ to spread the gospel, you have to first be willing to go. You ought to put that down. Go. Amen. And sometimes you, you cannot be slack Amen. That was some of my notes. Obedience begins blessings. Peter obeyed the Holy Spirit and went to Cornelius' house. He wasn't slack or slowful, slowful and moving. And brothers and sisters, we have the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit gets in your heart and gets in your mind and gets into your spirit to do something, it's better to obey the Holy Spirit. A lot, the leading of the Holy Spirit. A lot of times our purpose or our mission is or the or the it's not really uh clear why we have to do something but the spirit is leading you to do something but i found out that as you go sometimes your purpose or your mission is not clear initially but as you go then the god then god will reveal your purpose reveal your plan or why you've been called to uh, uh on assignment to do a work for the lord whether it's aiding people, whether it's helping people, whether it's preaching the gospel, where whether it's uh, uh, being used uh, from your for your to be your spiritual tools to be utilized to aid and to uplift Christ Jesus. Now, really, to understand this lesson, you really have to start at the background of the lesson. And you know, our time is short, but basically. Uh, uh, Cornelius received, it had, is in conversation with the angel of the Lord. Amen. And I'll, I'll let me, for time's sake, let me just read that. I'll read, uh, turn with me to Acts chapter 10 and, and verse, we're going to start at verse number one. And it says, basically, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man. And one that feared God with all his house would gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw it in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day and the angel of God coming unto him and saying unto him, Cornelius, when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine alms have come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. He lodges there with Simon Atana, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And we had declared all these things unto them. He sent them to Joppa. Now here it is, the text of the, the, the meat of this conversion, this experience right here is verse nine. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and certain vessels descending unto him as it was had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. The voice spake unto him again that second time, what God has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, which is three times, and the vessel was received up again unto heaven. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had sent 
seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, whose surname is Peter, was lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, behold, a, uh, behold, three men seek thee, and arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherein ye come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by the holy angel to send for thee into the house and to hear words of thee. So this is the background, basically, brothers and sisters, of our lesson. God has a plan of salvation. He's working it. Uh, he first had to deal with Peter, Peter being a, a Jew. And he said, and in this vision, he saw all manner of animals, amen, uh, which in, and you know, uh, in, in Jewish and uh, their dietary system, they considered some animals unclean. But the voice said, kill and eat. Peter responded, no unclean. No uncommon, no non-common uh, food I've ever I have tasted. But and then the Holy Spirit, or the voice of the Lord said, "What I have made clean is not for you to say unclean." Amen. So what God have made clean? That's the key verse. And so the the, the Jewish nation looked at the Gentile nation as unclean. So now he gets the vision. Now he hears the and he re he responds to the voice. Messengers are coming. You go with them. And that's what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, when the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, you have to move with the Spirit. A lot of times we want to question the Spirit. We want to sit there and doubt and, and, and as they say, ponder. We spend too much time pondering. When the Holy Spirit, when you divinely connected to the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit say move, you move. Obedience is better than sacrifice. A lot of times we miss our blessing just waiting for further instruction. It's just like the young man said that was it that fell off the boat in the ocean. Amen. And he was drowning. Amen. And he believed God. Amen. And he said, I, I must stay here because the Lord is going to send me some help. Amen. They said a boat came by and the young man said, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. Amen. And the boat sailed off. And they said a plane, a helicopter came by and he said, no, the Lord said he's going to save me. And the, Amen. And two other things, a motor rescue came by. The young man was waiting on the Lord. He and he died. Ultimately, he died and ultimately he went to heaven. He said, Well, Lord, why didn't you save me? The Lord said, I sent the helicopter. I sent the ship. Amen. So when the Lord moves, you have enough, have enough spiritual sense. That's all I'm trying to say. Amen. And so now he arrives at Cornelius' house. Amen. Amen. He uh uh he arrives at Cornelius' house. And he begins to preach the gospel. Amen. He understands his purpose. He understands his mission. And he begins to tell them about who Jesus is. He begins to talk about the life, the, 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 the ministry. He, he said, we were there. We saw him raise the dead. We saw Jesus, what he did with Lazarus. Amen. We saw him take two fish and five and feed the multitude. We saw him when they, they arrested him. Amen. We saw him crucified. We know we bear witness to that. Amen. But we also, amen, saw uh, uh, that he arose. That's what we read in, in verse number 41. He was not seen by all people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And in verse 42 in our lesson, he said, he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God Appointed as judge of the living. And so the, the disciples or the apostles at this time were just following instructions. Amen. Going about. They've already preached to them in chapter two. They've already preached to in Jerusalem and all Judea. Amen. In chapter eight of Acts, they've already preached to the Samaritan and they believed that they were saved. Now in chapter 10, amen, uh, they're preaching to the Gentiles. Amen. And as he began to preach, amen preach look what verse 43 said all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness everyone 
So salvation is for all, brothers and sisters. If you believe when you open up your John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting. Whosoever, look at these terms that is used, amen. God is not a God that show favoritism. And I think we need to get that clear. God is no respective person. If you have a heart, amen, towards God, if you have a heart for God, God will receive you. The plan of salvation, eternal life is for you. All the, 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 the spiritual blessings, amen, all the spiritual gifts, you're entitled, you're entitled to God's grace. You're entitled to the being, your sins to be forgiven by the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the good news, amen, amen. And he preached the resurrection of Christ, amen. And listen to this, I wanna point this out. Can you read, son, can read, someone read verse 44 in our lesson? Verse 44, read that for me again. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. Ah, I want you all to get happy right there. Peter's sermon was interrupted by the Holy Ghost. Ha! <laughs> Come on, y'all. Amen. The Holy Ghost moves when it gets ready. And I want to let you know something about the Holy Ghost. Uh, I wrote this down. You can't put the Holy Ghost in a box. Uh, you can't control the Holy Ghost. You cannot dictate to the Holy Ghost when to come. You cannot dictate to the Holy Ghost who to, who to, who to fall on. Amen. The Holy Ghost, that's God. Amen. That we only worship one God who manifests himself in three ways. God the Father, the Creator. God the Holy Spirit. Amen. God the Son, the Comforter. Amen. God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Comforter. Amen. God the Son, our Intermediate. Amen. But you cannot dictate. See, man loves to control. Ain't that right? We want to be in charge. We want to uh, determine where the, where, who got the Holy Ghost. Amen. We want to set up and talk about, oh, the Holy Ghost is in my denomination. Oh, we have. No, no, no. It don't work that way. And Peter was one of the greatest apostles, but he didn't have no control over the Holy Ghost. While he yet spoke. The Holy Spirit came on all. Thank God. Don't overlook that word all. I think, you know, that's, that's one word that, uh, that little word, A-double-L, -L, amen. It seems so uh, uh, small. A three little letters, A-double-L, A-L-L. -L. Seems so insignificant, don't it? But all means everything. All means everybody, amen. Come on. Amen. It fell on all. And, you know, I don't want to be in a house where some are just saved. I don't want to be somewhere, amen, when the Holy Spirit comes into the worship. I all should be able to experience, amen. And when you look in Acts, the second chapter, all that was in the house, hallelujah, was experienced the tongues of cloven fire. All that was in the house was filled, amen. That's what you call worship, amen. When we come on one accord in one place and the Holy Spirit, I often tell you this, that's what hinders some of our worship experiences because we all are not on one accord. Some folks come for worship and they are serious. They're invoking God's presence and some just come to socialize. You'd be surprised. Some folks are hindering the worship because you come with your eyes on other people, your eyes. You know, sometimes you come with a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, with the world matters on your hand. But the songwriter says, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. Amen. So when we come, we have to lay it all on the altar. Amen. All, all who heard the message. A amen. And it fell on. And that's why I said there was no particular order. Most of the time people believe, then they're baptized, and then the Holy Spirit comes. But you know, we can't dictate to the Holy Spirit when to come. Amen. And they were filled, amen, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Peter witnessed it. Not only did Peter witness it, but uh, there were uh, six men, would they, and look at verse 45, who accompanied Peter. Because the verse 45 said, the circumcised believers who come with Peter 
was astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even unto the Gentiles. Amen. So in verse in chapter 10, the Gentiles now have received the Holy Ghost. In chapter 2, the Jews. In chapter 8, the Samaritans. And now in chapter 10, the Gentiles. Remember what Jesus said, go into all the world. Amen. Remember in Acts chapter 1, he said, and the Holy Spirit shall come upon you first, but after you get it, amen, go into Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and all the uttermost parts of the world. God has a plan of salvation for all. I often stress, even in the Bible study, Genesis chapter 12, amen, uh, verses 1 through 3, is highlighting uh, verse number 3, Genesis chapter 12, when he told Abraham, through you all nations shall be blessed. God has a plan. It may not come, amen, when you think it ought to come, but in the fullness of time, amen, the good news have come to all, amen. And, and I wonder, there were some of the things uh, I wanted to say, Cornelius, amen. Uh, you know, sometimes one person makes the difference, amen, amen. Because everything, when you read this lesson from what I read from verse one to 23, everything is based on obedience. The Holy Spirit is speaking, and they follow through. Imagine if they just laid back like some of us do. Holy Spirit done showed you what to do, and we got lax. We became lazy, or we became to doubt, or we started wondering, should I? Or was that the really Holy Spirit? And sometimes, as I said to you, God will show you something. You get up, obey, and start moving. Now, the rest of the plan is revealed to you, or the rest of your purpose is revealed to you as you go. That's what the hymnologist said. We'll understand it better. What? By and by. Amen. And so as you go, imagine if Cornelius said, no, nah, I'm not going to uh, uh, obey what the Holy Spirit showed me, what the Lord showed me. He obeyed and sent men to Joppa. And, and Peter, knowing that he saw a vision, amen, and now he put two and two together. Said, kill and eat. He said, no, I have not. My mouth has never touched unclean. And the Holy Spirit, God said, you don't call unclean what I have made clean or I've made common. Amen. And so that triggered the whole reaction. Now he said it's inclusive. The Gentile nations are inclusive. Amen. And last but not least, amen, I want to show you something. Even with all, then Peter said, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Amen. So God has a plan for all and a plan of salvation. And you ought to rejoice. He's an inclusive God and not an exclusive God. And the last point I want to uh, share before I open up the lines, that even with all your good works, brothers and sisters, I want to let you know you're God's servant, you're God man, you're God woman. Uh, you're doing about doing good works, even with all your good works. Even with all the persecutions from the outside, I mean non-believer, you know, Satan and all his imps. Uh, I want you to turn with me to chapter, uh, Acts chapter 11. That's the last scripture I want to leave you with. Because even with all your good works of salvation, people being saved, amen, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will always still be challenged. Sometimes you're going to be challenged. And there's a certain word I want you to look at. I don't know what uh, version that you have in your Bible. Uh, Sister Pencil, can you read Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 4? Acts, okay. chap Acts chapter 11. This and is the chapter now, after Acts chapter 10. And this is from the King James Version. And the apostles and brethren that were that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come upon to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. I was right there. The Jewish believers heard that the Gentiles had Receive the word of God. So let me show you the order. And I'm going to share this with you. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing the word. Amen. So singing is good. We love testimony, services. Praying is always in order. But if you're going to be saved, 
Peter preached the gospel. Amen. Let's not overlook that. Peter preached the gospel. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear except he, unless he's been sent? So your faith comes by hearing the word. Amen. But now after they believe, I'm going to tell you something. News travel fast. So the news had got back to Judea and to the other apostles, amen, that the Gentiles had also received the word. Now, is, you mean this gospel have been expanded? We don't, we're not the chosen one. We're not the only one. And that's how some people think. You mean we're not the only one that possessed this Holy Spirit? We're not the only ones that are believers in the Lord Jesus. Because some people want to monopolize and control it. Amen. But you cannot control God. You cannot control and dictate to God who's going to get the Holy Spirit, who's going to be saved. Amen. And, and look, that's what it said in verse 1 and verse 2. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision, which were the Jews, contented with him. In other words, they was ready. The word had already arrived before even Peter got there. You know, people love to talk. Amen. And so those Jews said, how is, read on, Sister Pencil, 13, 3 and 4. Saying, thou wentest into men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. For, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying. You can pause right there. So they had the wrong, they got a message, but they got the wrong message. So the word had got to them via secondhand news. I don't call it, you can call it gossip, amen. You know, gossip was always going on. Sometimes things that get, a word to get out and it, and it get there and people will interpret what they want to interpret, how they want to interpret. So now when Peter arrived back to Jerusalem, they contented with him. I mean, you got people in your own church that will contend with you, will challenge you, amen. But we thank God that Peter was able to stand and, uh, and clear unto them what, how the Lord moved, amen, and how the Lord uh, worked on behalf. And, this, and, and he explained to them the whole ordeal, how he was in Joppa, how they came, how they got him, how he went to Cornelius' house, how the Holy Spirit fell on them. And the last verse I want you to read, Sister Pencio, and I'm done for today. You can ask questions. Verse 18. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Sister Pencio, can you read verse 17 again and then verse 18 again? Or as much. For as much then as God gave them the light gift as he died unto us. He did unto us. He did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I could withstand God? Verse 18, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. God bless you today. Good news for all. I open the line, amen, uh, for any comments, questions, or concern. Also, I love to hear from my other facilitators as well. So if anybody have any comments, questions, or concern, first, feel free to join in. I hope I was able to show a diagram of how God has a plan for all. Amen. And then uh, we want to turn it over to the hands of our superintendent. Any questions, comments, feel free to ask, statements. Good morning, uh, family, Pastor. Yeah, um, this was um, confirmation. Um, a lot of times when we, you know, we look at things from the uh, natural eye, we don't see the things from the spiritual eye. And I thank God for opening up my spiritual eyes to a lot of things that he had placed on my heart. You know, sometimes you pounder it and you, you don't want to question it, but you have to continue to trust God's word and move forward um, when the God puts the Holy Spirit in you and to be obedient because I know obedience is better than sacrifice. So this was a great lesson today, confirmation for me. 
God bless you. Thank you, Sister Kim Cunningham. Is there another com comments or concern? Questions? What did you take from the lesson? God bless you. Well, if not, some of our facilitators, Sister Durant or Sister. Yes. Uh, this, yeah. Um, I've been listening this morning, Pastor. Um, God Sister that we should move the spirit and we should also be believers of the word of God. Yes. Well, that's the key. Believers in the word of God. But you just say faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we don't have faith, how are we going to believe the word of God? We got to have faith to be a believer. Well, that, that's the initial starting point. Amen. Uh, Cornelius Amen. faith. Amen. But he realized that faith, uh, he needed salvation. He was religious. Yes didn't have that personal relationship. And so we have a lot of religious people, but they don't have personal relationship. Amen. Amen. And the God brings us into that relationship. Many people don't know the Lord in the pardon of their sins. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Foreman, if you're on the line, or Sister Durant, if you'd like to have something to say before we turn it over. Um, good morning. Um, it was an excellent, excellent, excellent lesson. One of the things that I just wanted to share that um, it is the preaching that when a person is saved is through the word of God. So the preaching is necessary in the church. And one of the things that we have to keep in mind is resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is our central belief, our tenet of Christian faith, the resurrection. And yes. we are all supposed to go out and preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to all people. So we don't have to pass people up anymore. This gospel is for everyone. And sometimes we think a person don't want to hear the gospel, but it is our assignment to go Thank out and talk about the news of Jesus. Amen. Beautiful. I'm Pastor. Minister Hayes. Minister Hayes. Yes. Can I say something? Sure. Okay. Um, I'm concentrating on, uh, I believe that's verse 47. I don't have on my glasses, but I think it's verse 47. And I thank God for this message of good news for all. Because when Christ died on the cross, he died for all. And hey, hallelujah. all received a measure of faith. Some people don't, don't. Uh, you know, they don't build their faith. Some run away from it. But I'm telling you that Christ died for all, and he wants everybody to have a measure of faith and to use it, and strengthen that faith, to have a personal relationship with him. These messages are not put into this book by accident. These messages are going on every day in the world right now because we are living through, and I repeat, Diversity, ethnicity, race, different religion, different um, denominations. Christ is not about that. He is about us getting the Holy Spirit to come alive in us so that we may go out and tell somebody. He wants us to be bold and to step forth and have strength, have courage, and go tell somebody. Because the Holy Spirit will be with you and strengthen you at this time. Thank you, Pastor. I bless you. Amen. Look at the words of the Pastor. Psalms. Pastor. Yes. Pastor. I'm yes. sorry. This is Deacon Cooper. Uh, one of the things that I find is that where we as followers of Christ fall really, 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 really short is that we do not go out. We do not go as a, as a church body or sometimes even as individuals to go out and spread the word of Christ. I know that a lot of times we spend most of our time inside the four walls and continually, you know, preach to the people that are sitting there that should know better. But we never go out and actually engage those people who are yet to know the uh, uh, Lord for the pardon of our sins and talk about the good news of Christ or who, the, or what, who is the good news. And that is one of, I think, is one of our biggest failures as followers mm -hmm. of Christ is we do not do like what Peter and all the other disciples did, and especially since that is the commission of Christ that gave to us, that we need to do that. 
and I'm not just talking about it. Say, and I think it happens a lot in a lot of whatever denominations are, uh, that comes under Christianity that doesn't happen. And uh, and that I think is popular, part of the reason why we are in the fix that we are in today in this world is because there are so many people who do not know anything about Christ, don't know who Christ is or anything like that. And what, what, he, what Christ did for us in terms of having us to have an opportunity for everlasting life through his spilt blood and his salvation. So uh, that's is something that I constantly think about uh, that we don't do as followers of Christ. And I think we fall very short at that. Point, uh, the evangelism part of the gospel is, uh, is much needed, but we have to know that every opportunity we have is an opportunity, every opportunity given some on a formal basis of going out, you know, anything that we do. Only thing our job is to plant the seed, share the word, Someone else come along and water, but God give the increase. But every opportunity given is an opportunity to share the gospel. Even our life that we live, let our light so shine before men that they see their good works. And sorry, Father, for the Father, glory, Father, Father, which is that. And look what the words of the songwriter said. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. So we have to lift up Christ. Amen. Even when they lifted him up from the when they lifted that cross off the ground, that was still a plan of salvation. Amen. Even in his crucifixion, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. So our job is to lift him and he will draw. God bless you. Uh, anyone one, else? One, one other thing, Pastor, and I'm done. Um, like I said, I didn't finish it. Like I said, in 47, we are living through a bad time right now. But uh, right here, it tells you, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. When Christ died on the cross, he gave everybody a measure of faith. And we must stand on that faith because we are all one in That's right. Jesus Christ. Thank yeah. you, Pastor. Yeah, and then and, 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 and like I was sharing earlier, there was no particular order. Most of the time people were baptized and then received the Holy Spirit. But here they received the Holy Spirit first and then was received water baptism. This event right here, brothers and sisters, was the Gentiles uh, day of Pentecost. We read about day of Pentecost in chapter number two, but this is the Gentiles day of Pentecost right here. And they had seven people of the circumcision, which were the Jews, Peter and six others, as the Bible said, that accompanied him. And they went back and they told it <laughs> what the Lord have done. God bless you this morning. And we look to see you on tomorrow morning. Amen. I have I didn't receive any update on the uh from the family as of yet. Preferably I'll reach out to them again, uh, to the family of Brother George Milton. And preferably I'll have some information on tomorrow morning. God bless you. But let's keep the Milton family in prayer god bless you yes pastor sorry yeah. i have one question it says here that god chose pacific witness to encounter his resurrection so who were the pacific people that he chose well those were his disciples oh so he just pointed out some that he wanted to witness oh yeah well those were the ones well actually it was if you look in the divine plan of God, it was really the women first <laughs> that ran ahead, <laughs> amen, and they, they're the ones that ran and told the disciples, amen, and they didn't really believe them, but it was the women were the first witnesses of his resurrection. But that was part, they were part of God's divine plan, and then Peter and John ran to the sepulcher, and they found that he, was, uh, he had arisen. You know, they saw the evidence of him not being present. And then those that uh, he, when Jesus appeared uh, in those uh, 50 days before ascension, you know, uh, he appeared unto them. He, he ate with them. He, uh, uh, he told them not to touch him, but he came and spoke to them and gave them divine uh, instructions. You read it even in Acts chapter one, he appeared to them then. If you read those scriptures that I gave you in Matthew, uh, um, well, you just go with Acts one, yeah, because that was before. Okay. Matthew eight was before uh, 
uh, uh, Matthew 28, amen. That was during the resurrection, amen. After the resurrection, yeah, that's okay. right. In Acts 1, it was before ascension, yeah, yeah. So these are Matthew okay. 28, 16. He appeared to them and gave them these divine instructions that they should follow. And they're just being obedient. But like I said, this was about 10 years later after Pentecost, you know, but they actually received okay. salvation. Amen. A salvation is a divine. I bless you. My time is run over. Uh, sister, if Sister Foreman or Sister, if not, then Sister Hill. Okay. Uh, we thank God for the lesson. I don't want to swing on a gate. Everything that needed to be said was done. Um, but I do want to emphasize something that uh, a few people have already said, that the good news is for all. It is our responsibility as well. It's not just for the preacher that's up there on Sunday morning that's preaching the word. You know, uh, that's for us to get our instructions so that we could go out as well. We all have a responsibility to share the good news with our families, with our neighbors, with our coworkers, for anyone that we come in contact with. It is our responsibility. We are the ones that are to go out. It says go, that is our commission. That is what we are to do. We've already heard, go, go to everywhere not just some places, it's not within the four walls. Our work does not begin until we leave the four walls of, the, of our building, as it is right now in the building. So we have responsibility for where we, where we are, on the train, on the bus, anybody that has asked a question of us, you know, and I have up here uh, 1 Peter 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that acts, acts of you, a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. That means we ought to be ever ready Christians, always ready. We're standing no matter what, just like a soldier is always ready to, it's on their post of duty, is always God, have to always be you know, ready, prepared and ready. You as a soldier in this army of God, you need to be always ready, prepared to give an answer to anybody, no matter who they are, that asks you why you believe what you believe. Okay, Sister Hill. I bless you, thank you. And then another thing I wanna say, if God don't show favoritism, who are you? Who am I? If God don't show favoritism. I bless you, have a good day. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Our church school is truly a blessing, teaching the word of God, which is good news for all. I was encouraged when I read the um, scripture that said, there is no favoritism, no matter what position you hold or where you stand. There is no favorite. Also, I'd like to thank you for your donations to the church school, um, whether you do um, Giblify or on Sunday mornings, you bring your donations, and we are really grateful, and we thank you. 10 a.m. morning service on Sunday, you can pick up your um, books if you haven't already done it it's very important that you do it so you can follow along and read the lesson these are good lessons and you should study have to study and you should want to study and it is a fee of ten dollars uh the sunday school in the sunday uh, rather Sunday worship service at 10 a.m. We are still following the guidelines set by the C CDS for your protection to wear a mask. Today is not one of my good days with these um, allergies, but thank God for life. He woke me up. And also we are to wear masks once again at all times while we're in the sanctuary and six feet um, social.
existence. Thank you and be safe. <clears throat> uh, Brenda, you have anything else to say? No, I'm I'm good. Okay, thank you. Okay, then we can um, turn in our books if you have it on page one eleven. Let's see if I can read this. Lord, it should not surprise us that you created for yourself a people from all humanity. Rid us of the of any tendency to set up within the body of Christ that your spirit has already knocked down. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lord, to remember, God does, doesn't discriminate. Salvation is for all people, period. Let us be dismissed. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Hope to see you tomorrow. And be blessed and be safe. Thank you, Pat. Have a blessed day. Bless oh, God. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Thank you for making it so plain, Pastor. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, follow the word of God. Amen. <laughs> bless, bless. Amen. Love you each and every. God bless you. 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 God